Good afternoon, my name is Alina Shaltsova. I'm an immigration attorney from Brooklyn, New York. In today's video, we're going to discuss the most recent immigration news, what's been proposed by the Republicans and Democrats to address the immigration crisis in the United States, what we can hope for is going to be addressed in the budget reconciliation provisions, if they're going to be passed or even proposed, if it's going to be possible to uh, squeeze immigration laws into the budget reconciliation provisions. And also, I'm going to address some rumors that are being spread around and I receive questions about from my clients and subscribers. And of course, I'm also going to mention as to what the Biden administration is doing with regard to the huge backlog of the DACA applications that currently currently counts at 81,000 applications that are being in the backlog with USCIS. First of all, thank you very much for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so and hit that notification bell button so you will stay updated with regard to the most recent immigration news and will receive the most useful immigration tips. So let's start. Well, first of all, I'm going to talk about the backlogs. You may have seen in the media or maybe from my previous videos that unfortunately, current administration stepped into the shoes of the past administration by creating a huge backlog for DACA applications. Currently, there are about 81,000 DACA applications that are not being processed and the administration blames the need for biometrics, which necessary cause delays, lack of training for the staff and lack of staff due to COVID and other changes. And the administration vowed to address these issues and to reduce the backlog. And of course, it's a good uh, hope and uh, good news for DACA, potential DACA holders and current DACA uh, applicants, because it's going to take me to my next point, because it's very may happen that DACA beneficiaries may be one of the groups of people that actually will be helped by the current administration and Congress in the frame of the upcoming budget voting and budget reconciliation provisions. And let's talk about this very, very important point. Of course, the most important news that I would like to discuss with you guys is that now we approximately know exactly which groups of immigrants may potentially benefit from the budget reconciliation. And for sure, we do not know if they're even going to be included because currently Democrats are waiting, and I guess Republicans as well, are waiting to hear from a person who's actually going to rule if an immigration provision can be included in the budget reconciliation proposal. It's very, very important. There is a person who is going to determine the fate of immigrants in the United States. And her name is uh, Elizabeth McDonough, if I pronounce it correctly. And she is someone who uh, is chosen to decide this important question, whether or not immigration provisions can even be included in the budget reconciliation. And if they can, these are the groups potentially that may benefit from the budget reconciliation. DACA holders, number one, DACA holders. Number two, TPS holds. Number three, farm workers. And number four, you probably guessed it, essential workers. Very, very important, guys. Essential workers potentially may um, include as many as five million people. And of course, various groups, it's not necessarily that they're all separate. We know that many DACA holders and TPS holders are also essential workers and maybe uh, farm workers. So this is very good news. These are the groups that the Democrats are going to be focusing on if they're going to be drafting 
reconciliation provision after they have the green light for that. Now, what's different from this recent news, from what we heard before, is that essential workers are now being included as a part of this reconciliation plans. Previously, they discussed only DACA, TPS, and farm workers. It's a big change. Hopefully, it's not just a mistake by the reporters, and we are going to have the blueprint of the provision as early as uh, this week or perhaps the next week. This is what the certain trustworthy media outlets reported going, is going to happen, and we're going to see. Now, let's talk about what is being proposed by the Democrats already and what's actually passed by the House. The House Appropriations Committee on Tuesday sought to recapture visas that would be lost due to coronavirus delays and Trump administration policies as it pushed forward the broader Department of Homeland Security funding bill. The bill provides $52.81 billion in funding for the department and its agencies, including those that patrol the border. But Tuesday's markup added several provisions to the bill that would expand the number of visas offered to temporary workers while working to reverse the impact of various policies from former President Trump. From what I understand, Democrats are concerned, and rightfully so, about the people who were not able to receive visas due to Trump bans, including Muslim ban and immigrant visa ban. And as because of that, there is a legislature that's being passed by the House is, that is going to preserve or recapture lost visas for devilatory winners 2020 and 2021 who were not able to use or finalize rather the devilatory process, immigration process, because of the bans. And also the bill proposed to preserve unused family and employment visas and family visas specifically because what's happened, uh, what, ha what is happening with the family category of the unused visas is that if in a certain year family category is not used, visas for family members, they're going to be moved, shifted towards the employment quota. And it's very important because, of course, that's how we end up with huge backlogs in, let's say, F4 category. And at times in F2A, F2B, those are categories where, for example, um, the, the, the F4 is for siblings of the U.S. citizens, and the other ones that I mentioned are for, let's say, children and spouses of the green card holders or sons and daughters of the green card holders, unmarried ones, or U.S. citizens. And those are called preference-based family categories. And we all know that because of the Trump bans that were put in place, Many people were not able to use those visas and they expired. And that's why to preserve those allocations within those years in the appropriate categories, Democrats passed that bill. Also, the provision that was passed, the one of the provisions that was passed would address the increase for H-2B visas, which are um, temporary workers. Of course, it's not H-1B. We would all hope that H-1B quotas are going to go up, but we're going to see. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps there will be some other ways to address employment-based immigration. One of the things that I wanted to mention to you is that right now is a good time, by the way, to bother your elected officials and um, urge them to act on immigration reform. We all do not want that those promises to remain just promises, but we also all need to do something about that. Because remember, if nothing is done, nothing is going to be, to be actually um, affected, right? And finally, I just wanted to answer a couple of questions, which I believe are very important. And if you guys are not going to get the right advice here. 
you may really hurt your immigration future. One of these questions is this. If a person who does not have unlawful entry can adjust status in the United States without um, having to file for I-601A waiver and getting a visa overseas. In other words, if people who cross the border at some time, I received some questions saying that people are talking, some friends of a friends informed my clients that um, you no longer have to travel overseas to get your visa if you enter the country without an admission, without being admitted or inspected, if it's true. So it's not true, okay? What happened was that Biden proposed to eliminate unlawful presence bar, but it hasn't happened yet, guys. Someone who is in the United States without inspection or admission will still have to travel in most cases. Of course, you should always consult with an attorney, but will still have to travel overseas if he or she would like to get an immigrant visa. Uh, for example, if now their spouse uh, is uh, or child is sponsoring them. Okay, it's called I-601A waiver route. So unlawful presence bar has not been el eliminated and the bar on adjustment for people who do not have admission or inspection has not been eliminated. Very, very important. Another important question about reopening of the old immigration cases. I know that now people receive a lot of information about reopening of the old cases, but many people are confused. It's not that every case can be reopened. No. It's only cases that were started with a defective notice to appear. Defective notice to appear which did not contain the date and time of when a person was supposed to come to court. And I'd rather, at the bottom of that notice, it would say TBD to be determined. Only those cases, guys. And it makes sense to file a motion to reopen only if now you qualify for a relief. Because if you don't qualify for a relief and you will try to reopen your case, you're going to find yourself again in the removal proceedings without an opportunity for a resolution. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you find this video helpful. Please subscribe to my channel, share, like this video, and... I hope to see you soon.